you must absolutely have the illusion of independence and self-determination. We have a problem then. We have a problem that to really, really be independent, to really be an individual, which in psychological terms is called individuation, that's difficult for most people. It's kind of tough. Uh, it requires, requires work. It requires, you know, to think and act in moral ways and, oh, that's just too much trouble. I wish it was a halfway, you know, stage. So the media goes, what well, well, there is. We'll sell you the fashion of independence. You can buy into this. You can be a goth, a punk, a, you know, you can be straight, you can be gay, you can be macho. You, you, we'll sell you all sorts of uh, images to decorate your inauthentic life. And that will pacify you because there is a voice that's kind of screaming inside of you that you're not living an authentic life. We know that. We know that's a tough voice to live with. And, but you also can't really do anything about it because you know, you're lazy and you're weak. And you realize what you would have to sacrifice or lose if you really took the true moral way, the way of selfhood and the way of finding out who and what you are. We know that's difficult for you. So what we'll do is we'll manifest a bunch of simulacras. We'll, we have a whole industry creating false personas. But if you buy into that, and it's very easy to do that. I mean, it's just a matter of going down to the hairdresser and coloring your hair pink and wearing a couple of earrings and get a few tattoos and you know having a big T-shirt with anarchy written on it. But you're the last person who even understands what true freedom and anarchy is. Well, don't worry about that. You know, well, the world is full of those kinds of people, isn't it? But do you see it being any more free? If that was ever going to solve the world's problems, what happened in the 1960s when everybody was free, quote unquote? Where's the love now? <laughs> Did it stop wars? Did it stop uh, evil men ruling the world? Did it stop genocide? Did it stop the mutilation of animals and abattoirs? I mean, tell me what one thing that the hippie movement or the punk movement of the 1970s achieved well, I'll tell you what they achieved. The leaders of the punk movement are living like Pashas and Maharajas in million dollar houses over there in Bel Air and also in uh, Los Angeles. You know, Billy Idol has a fleet of Harley Davisons. That's what happened, you yeah, know, that's what happened. But they're wearing a hammer and sickle. We're for the people, peace and love, CND, all that shit, you know, utter nonsense, utter nonsense. Maybe the man from within who's completely incognito, who's working within the system, you know, suit and tie, you know, would never even do pass them by on the street. Maybe those people will do more damage to the evil status quo than all those hordes screaming for reform, you know. Because it's not just a mass of people label reading, running away into these inauthentic models. It's a small group of educated people, dedicated, passionate, absolutely zero tolerance for the lie who are from all walks of life, who have spiritually, most importantly, that they are spiritually adept. That they've, they've, they understand the name, what knowledge is. They've, they have reverence for knowledge. They're not just trying to gain knowledge. Any idiot can do that. Gaining knowledge, well, God, the schools are full of it. No, 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 it's a matter of loving knowledge. That's a big difference. Loving knowledge, understanding what knowledge is, is a whole different thing than gaining knowledge. So there's these fine lines in all of this, very fine lines. And if the knowledge has to be empowering and changing you first, how can you do anything to change another world? Or maybe you don't even have the right. Maybe we were, maybe, maybe we're on the complete wrong subject matter altogether. How does anyone even think that they have a right to involve themselves in the life or the lifestyle of anyone else? If you really think about that, you'll find that it's, it's pretty preposterous. But at the same time, you do have the right to fix your own life. That at least we know is an is a absolute. You have the absolute right to work on your life. You have, the, you have the right to make any of the choices that you want to make. So then my work sort, sort of really focuses on that and doesn't stray from that. If it is true that the Illuminati, the child molesting priests, the Templars, and all of these people, what would we think if it is proven or found out that each and every one of these people has the perfect right to do what they are doing and that you in fact have really no right to tell them or anyone else what to do what happens if that turns out to be the spiritual law and that the only thing that you have the right to do is to change your own life regardless of what anybody else is doing well then we have a problem because the whole world is running around doing exactly the opposite everyone's running around fixing all of these other people and waving placards and getting reforms and getting to change this and do that or we'll lock you up and you know, and society will go through these cycles in which you have a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, a little bit of dark, a little bit of light. And yet the real work is about you taking care of your own house, your own garden. And if everybody did that, 
you know, unseen forces would come to aid. Man would, like, like Vernon Howard said, we can accept that God can become man to save man, but we can't accept that man can become God to save himself. It's one of the most powerful statements I've ever, ever heard. And so what is that dependency in human beings that makes them refute that? Of course, we know that everyone listening to the sound of my voice is going to refute that. No, it's Jesus who's meant to do it. Muhammad Allah, what are you talking about? Oh, that's all that humanist stuff. Man being his own God. Oh, satanic evil. So we already know that, you know, that's not a common hell theory. But wait a minute. What then is the motive that makes people refute that statement? Before we get into what they're into, you're a Christian. You're, why would you feel motivated to not accept that man is his own savior? I'm very interested in that. I'm very interested in as to why you, not the cult, not the clan, not your guru, why you would, you know, have a problem with that. What, what's in your psychology that has made you in the 20 years of your life or the 25 years of life or the 40 years of your life not have enough brain cells to realize, my God, that's, that's the bottom line. Because in my opinion, if you don't accept that, you are an unsane person. You're not insane, you're unsane. You're toxic and you, you you know you need to be quarantined or something that's really the long and short of it in my opinion then i want to get the crucifix out as soon as i hear that somebody is uh, you know thinking that another authority another person has the rights over their mental and emotional and attitudinal and psychic life i'm worried about that person because i know that person has got some very serious psychological and existential problems right off the bat right off the bat then that person is going to be, you know, a herd, part of some herd, or will be a controller of a herd, or will be manipulated by the herd, or whatever you want to call it. But that person is not going to end ever, you're never going to find that person, you know, in doing good in the world, real necessary good at all. It's just a contradiction in terms, it's impossible. They may be sold the illusion, or the delusion that they're doing wonderful work, because you know, they give to Live Aid, or the next stupid charity that pops up out of the woodwork, you know, they were there. Great, you were there, yeah. Well, we had Live Aid, didn't we? When was that, 1982 or something? You know, did the world get any better? No, all that happened is a Bono and uh, Geldof got on their best clothes one day and walked off down there to Buckingham Palace, got on their bony knees and said, thank you, thank you, mom, to, for their little award. Okay, that's what happened. And their kids will go to good schools and they will have, you know, million dollar hotels and they'll have the best, uh, time of it because they're, they're they're sellouts they're people who sold out or, or were already working for this cult of Dionysus uh, people's champions in order to lead you away just like in the Monty Python meaning of life follow Andre the waiter he's got something to show you so you go up down some streets over here up some alleyways come on through a bunch of parks me, huh? take you on a 15 minute tour Nearly there now. to show you something see that it leaves you up in an empty field much of a philosophy I know Fuck you. And then gets angry with you. Fuck off. You don't think it's very much. Don't come following me. Yeah. So follow, keep on following Andre. That's what every guru, every priest, every politician is telling you. It's all tomorrow. Every scientist. You're going to have it tomorrow. You're going to have it tomorrow. You can't have it today. Because we don't live in the now. We live in tomorrow's world. Tomorrow doesn't even, even their own science proves it doesn't, tomorrow doesn't exist. But they're going to tell you it all exists in tomorrow. So the fundamental line is discover that there's a hidden hand. Mind controlling the world. Operating to keep you down. Understand that you you are a participant in that because you are allowing those hooks into your flesh. I've said it many times and I said it recently, said it last year, you must distinguish the difference between saying, have I been sold a lie? And the difference between, yeah, but have I bought a lie? Because there's all the difference in the world attitudinally between those two statements. You are being sold a lie. But that's the perfect right of that salesman to sell you a lie. The universal force doesn't care about that. Universal forces judgment, you know, field is not really operating on that frequency at all. The judgment field, the, un the whole spiritual ball of wax begins based on whether or not you bought that lie. That's, where the, that's the clause, that's the nuance, that's the difference. It's, it's a no different a rule than anything that applies when you're shopping downtown. I can't even think of how it would be different. 
you know this person prefers Gucci over you know Versace this person you know this person likes the Levi's over Wrangler they have the right to sell you whatever they feel like they have the right to even believe what they feel like you know somebody likes cappuccino somebody else likes what latte mocha right choice must be there the, the decision the decision is yours but, but where the real moral component comes in is what what you bought and what you put your energy into and what you gave in exchange for what you bought and if man is not in inner harmony or tuned correctly he's going to create chaotic noise if a guitar isn't tuned properly don't expect it to play well it's going to be in this court and it will create chaotic sounds so the bottom line comes in is but how, how are you tuned how are you tuning your inner instrument your consciousness as I said the alternative to that is to not tune it but then hang out with a whole symphony of likewise untuned people so you can all believe you're cool in fact you can say no this is a radical new form of avant-garde music we're playing here it's real hip it's real cool all this chaos in fact this chaos is really true this chaos is a, the ultimate form of music but that's just a, you you know mind controlling yourself into into believing that your chaos is order and unfortunately there are very toxic people in the world who don't like order they want chaos because they feel good in that chaos and you're providing it for them no human being who is in their center can be hypnotized that's what needs to be remembered no human being who is in their center who is being guided who's close to their intuition who's a sharp critical apparatus who's got a sharp sense of judgment can ever be manipulated not for any permanent or lasting length of time you know they can be diluted temporarily perhaps but you know it's like a muscle you have to keep on working on a muscle you have to keep on sharpening like anything and I really believe that the, a lot of the obstacles and challenges and, and you know tragedies that are occurring in the world that's what this for these are this is the grinder this is the thing that's sharpening the blades of intelligent people you know you have to have friction I'm sorry it just happens you can't sharpen an axe or a beautiful blade without that grinder without that sharpening apparatus and the friction that's caused in the and the mechanics of that so it's the same way with sharpening consciousness you must have this the this whetstone of the world in order to sharpen your mind and sharpen your consciousness so that you come to see you know some of the meaning in, in all of this and it's ultimately a discovery of your own self it's not about a discovery of society or other people all of it is a discovery of who and what you are ultimately <laughs>